Hey guys, Todd Helms with Wingmen, bringing you a high mountain seasonings recipe with mallard ducks that you're gonna die for. All right, so this recipe is super simple. We get mallard duck breast. You can use cranes, you can use geese. We use sage grouse earlier in the year. This is a recipe that we attribute to Ed Arnett, who we hunted with on our sage grouse project this fall, and he made sage grouse taste good. And I didn't think that was possible, so we're trying this with mallards, and I've done it a couple times now already, and I'm gonna, and I gotta tell you, this is the best mallard duck recipe that I've ever found. I usually like to leave the skin on my birds and do them Gordon Ramsay style, but we're having some rice breast issues out here this year, and it's still fairly early, so we're fighting pin feathers too. So I just skinned, I just filleted the breasts off these birds, and. It's really easy to replace the fat from the skin. We're gonna use olive oil, and I'm gonna drizzle olive oil on these birds, and then I'm going to use high mountain rub. I'm gonna use the venison rub this time. I've also used the garlic pepper rub in the past, and it's great. Guys, the awesome thing about high mountain seasonings is that they have a bunch of different rubs that work really, really well for any red meat. You could use their steak seasoning. You could use their trail dust seasoning. Man, you name it. All of these are gonna be really good on these ducks, but we're gonna go with the venison rub this evening. I'm probably gonna sprinkle on a little bit of kosher salt as well. Not much, because this stuff has salt in it. So that's the process. Let's rock and roll. Before we do all this though, I gotta tell you, I've got a Traeger sitting outside that is glowing red. That thing is smoking hot, and it's as hot as I could possibly get it, and that's key. You don't want to do these birds on a cold, low smoke, or you don't want to do them at 350. You want to do these things hot and fast. The idea is to sear the outside of the meat so it seals and keeps the juice in, and we're going to cook these things for like a minute and a half on both sides, medium rare at most. I know you're saying, ooh, medium rare duck. Trust me, that's how you've got to eat these things, or they're going to turn into shoe leather, and you're going to get that ducky gamey flavor. The more well done this stuff is, the less palatable it becomes, even with a great seasoning like High Mountain. So we're going to get these things prepped, we're going to run outside, we're going to throw them on a smoking hot Traeger, and then we're going to eat. So stay with us. Here we go. Olive oil. Real simple. Just a drizzle. And I've got a little bit of duck fat remaining on these which is good, that's what I want. Just a drizzle on, maybe a little bit more on that one. I know you guys are probably looking at my awesome oil bottle. That thing was a uh, score at Costco, believe it or not. Now I'm gonna be fairly liberal with the seasoning because you're only getting a little tiny bit of seasoning on the outside of the bird And when I'm done, I'm going to cut, I'm going to slice these things real thin and I'll sprinkle a little bit more seasoning on them. And I'm going to rub that stuff on a little bit and kind of get it evenly distributed on that duck breast. These are all mallards. Well, that one might be a widgeon, but these are all from our hunt with Ramsey Russell the other day. And it was an awesome, it was an awesome hunt. Ramsey's a great guy to hunt with and ton of fun. Great dude. And I wish he was here to try this because if I know Ramsey, like I think I do from our hunt the other day, he would, he'd kill for this. This stuff's really good. And I got to be honest with you, my kids are in their room playing right now. They're doing this at my house. And uh, they're in their room playing at the moment. But I made this the other night for them. And they were like, Daddy, this is so good. When can we have more? I said, well, good thing for you. Daddy killed a bunch of ducks last week, last weekend, so there's more. And this is from that badge, but they ate those up real quick. My wife made a succotash um, out of the leftovers, which turned out really good. And I, I guess just my point with all this is, is mallards are an incredibly, ducks in general, but especially mallards, widgeon, pintails, uh, teal, wood ducks. Any of your puddle ducks, with the exception of shovelers for the most part, are extremely good table fare if you treat them right. 
that's not overcooking them. Anything red meat, you got to treat like red meat, and that's waterfowl is no exception. I'm going to sprinkle all this on here, and we're going to transfer this straight to that smoking hot Traeger that's sitting outside. I got to tell you, my mouth's starting to water already, guys. This is going to be good. Again, venison rub. But it's not venison, Todd. Guess what? It doesn't need to be. It's red, dark meat. It's delicious red, dark meat. You use anything like a venison rub, garlic, pepper, steak seasoning, any of those red meat intended high mountain seasonings, you're going to knock it out of the park. All right. So this is ready to go to the Traeger. And I'm just going to walk it out the door and we're going to rock and roll. Here we go. I got my two trusty Labradorks here with me. They're my taste testers. Not. They don't get any of this. They just get to fetch them. But we're going to put this on the grill. Heel. Hondo. Heel. Heel. Stay. We're going to put this on the grill. Duck breast is ready. Our grill is about 415 degrees. It's about as hot as I can get my Traeger. Um, if you've got a gas grill, you can get smoking hot, even better. But I'm going to let the dogs go play, and we're going to do this. Go play. Go play. Here we go. That sizzles what we're looking for. And I got to do this fast so I don't lose a bunch of heat. This is exactly what I need. And I do it on the front of the Traeger because that's where my flame goes. That's the hottest part of my grill. There and there. Close it before I lose my heat. Otherwise, you, you've got to have a hot grill. It's, this thing's got to be smoking, searing, blazing hot. It's only going to take a couple of minutes, maybe a minute and a half on one side, minute and a half on the other. Two tops. Again, medium rare is what we want. That's what we're shooting for. Any more than that on any wild red meated bird, and you ruined it. Now, can you slow cook stuff? Yes. That's a whole different concept. We're not going for slow cooking. We're going for hot and fast, like you need a ribeye steak. Medium rare is what we want. We want it juicy, we want it fairly red in the middle, and that's what we're after. So, those are gonna sit here. I'm gonna go wash my cutting board, and I'll come right back out. Okay. Yeah, it's the dad thing. You gotta, you got tongs, you gotta. Yeah, anyway, stupid, I know. These things should be ready for the flip. They've been about a minute and a half. I'm gonna pull one off, take a quick look. And the, the cool thing about duck breast is, if any of these, if you leave the tenderloin on, you get a little appetizer. So, let's see. Ooh, buddy. Yeah. That tenderloin, not that one's not quite ready, but these are ready for the flip. So I'm gonna flip every single one of them. They got a nice little sear char on them. Oh yeah, these are going to be perfect, guys. These are going to be perfect. I'm going to peel that off. Let me just wait. Again, that high mountain steak seasoning, or that high mountain medicine rub, is on that meat. It sticks to it really well with the... The high mountain seasoning sticks to that duck breast really, really well with the olive oil. If I was just to sprinkle that on there with no olive oil, on just straight meat what well, doesn't stick like a steak um there's some differences if we were to cut that the steak is cut it's not an outer muscle there's not a sheath like there is like a tissue sheath like there is on breast meat now the back side that's been cut away from the bone the seasoning has a tendency to work into that really well but it doesn't on that first side so that's why we use the olive oil the olive oil also adds a little bit of fat back into the mix and i don't know about you but i like fat it's good so these tenderloins are probably ready to rock i'm going to yank those off let those breasts finish up there's a tenderloin for me 
another tenderloin for me, tenderloin for the cameraman. Lucky I feed him at all, but those look good. Those look really good. And they're hot and they're good, they're ready. Let's do it. Mmm. Yeah, buddy. That high mountain venison seasoning is awesome. It's awesome on any wild red meat. It's awesome on steak, too, if you want to put it on a ribeye. Good stuff. That is where it's at. That's why we do this. Mm. I don't know about you, but if I can go out, shoot some ducks, some geese, whatever, bring them home, and actually enjoy eating them, man, it adds to the experience. I think for too long, waterfowl has gotten a bad rap in that it's, it's gamey, it's tough, it tastes like liver, it's fishy, whatever. Nah, you're doing it wrong, man. Are there some ducks that do taste like that? Yeah, yeah. But if you, you took a skanky old merganser, big old sawbill, dragon head, whatever you guys call them, and you pounded that thing out and made schnitzel out of it and deep fried it, put gravy all over it, guess what? It's probably gonna eat just fine. Is it gonna be my first choice? No. And there are some birds, like the golden eyes that we get through here, that actually have a warning that comes with them because they possess high levels of heavy metals and things like arsenic in them. So before you eat things like golden eyes and some of those, and, and shovelers, for example, uh, some, of their, some of the birds that have a tendency to collect some nasty stuff, you might want to check the local advisories. I don't have to worry about that with mallards. I can only remember one time in my life when... I got into mallards and they were they were pretty tough. They were pretty they were pretty strong. And that was back on Little Bay de Knock in Michigan, uh, in the UP. And we had a big, big spawn of alewives that year. And we got a big push of mallards out of Canada fairly early. And the alewives, those mallards were on the bay and they were eating those alewives. And those ducks that we shot that year tasted like a merganser. Um, they were super fishy. They were, they were tough to palate, but that's pretty rare. Most of the time, you know, your, your puddle ducks like mallards, gadwalls, widgeon, teal, they're eating vegetation or they're eating aquatic insects or, and their meat is, it's firm, it's lean, it's delicious. Harris, that's for you, bud. Thank you. That's pretty sporty. <laughs> and that's a tenderloin. That's the best there is. So, trust me, they're gonna, these are going to be good. Let's take a look. That might be a little soft yet. I do the old touch test. That those are pretty soft. I'm going to leave those cooking. And I'm going to move them a little bit. So it's going to be a little longer than a minute and a half on these. How am I doing that? Bring that up front. I'm going to take that one to the back. Move this down. It's going to be a little longer than a minute and a half on these. And that's okay. You've got to know your appliance. You've got to know your what you're working with. There's another tenderloin. Because if your grill is a little bit cold-blooded like mine, got to be able to adjust. Now, if I was using a hot gas grill or charcoal or whatever, oh man, mm, that is so good. It might be a different story. The tri my trigger, and it's cold tonight, probably 20 degrees, 25 degrees maybe tonight. And the trigger is designed to like smoke and slow cook it's not the best tool that I have found for high temperature searing heat. Um, a good cast iron skillet in an oven or on a range or on a, on a cooker, whatever. But pretty hard to beat a good old fashioned gas grill or charcoal grill that you can get the temps 
up to 450, 500 degrees or even higher to really smoke these things hot. And I don't mean smoke them, but to really cook these hot and fast. These are gonna be good. I just gotta pay a little closer attention to them. We're probably looking at five minutes in on cooking time. And that's okay. You just kinda gotta know what you're working with. I'm gonna leave those set. Mm. That's going to be good. Yeah, if you're not, if you're, you know, grinding up all your mallards and waterfowl into salami or snack sticks, I mean, that's your call. And I do that too. You guys have seen me do that, make waterfowl snack sticks. And it's a great way to burn up a lot of birds, especially geese. Geese lend themselves really well to stuff like that. But man, your ducks, if you're like me, I, I really like to eat duck. So with this with this recipe, it's super simple, super simple. Total time elapsed, 30 minutes, and you got food on the grill. By the time you prep these, season them, get the grill hot, uh, all your stuff around and get them cooked, you're good to go. Let's take another look. Yep, the obligatory snick snack. Ooh yeah, these are ready. Especially because I'm gonna take these in the house and I'm gonna let them rest for about 10 minutes before I do anything with them. Yeah, I'm gonna turn that to shut off mode, let it come down. Yeah, buddy. These are ready to go. Oh! Shut that off. I don't have to yell anymore. Look at that. They're seared on the outside just like a steak, but they're gonna be juicy and tender on the inside, like medium rare steak. I'm telling you, if you're not eating your ducks like this, guys, you're missing out. And you can do this with duck, goose, crane, man, any red meated bird. This is probably my favorite way to do it. So I'm gonna take these in the house, let them rest, and we'll be right back. All right. So these duck breasts have been resting for about 10 minutes and we're gonna dig in. So what I'm gonna, what I like to do with these, I like to cut them across the grain, thin, and then sprinkle a little bit more seasoning on them, not crazy, just a little bit on that meat side. So here we go. I'm gonna take, let's start with this one, right here. Man, these look delicious, holy smokes. Good sharp knife, ooh, look at that. Perfect. These bad boys are definitely medium rare, which is what we want. And I like to slice it thin. You can just eat this on its own. You can serve it with a vegetable dish, with potatoes, rice. I mean, it doesn't matter. Anything you'd eat with steak. I personally really like these with a little bit more seasoning on them. I spread it out. Slice nice and thin like that. And I spread it out and I sprinkle a little bit more seasoning on it. Not a lot. Just a little bit. Perfect. I like that just as is. Just eat it. Um, not a big vegetable guy. But you could serve it on a salad. You could do mashed potatoes and gravy with it. Whatever you want. I personally really, really like this with a good crusty piece of bread. And I throw it on there, maybe a little cheese, and munch it up like a sandwich. But, I'm telling you what, this is pretty stinking good. Just like this. Mm. That's good. A high mountain seasoning. This again, this is a venison rub. Absolutely delicious stuff. It pairs well with the duck. Mm. Guys, the next time you've got a whole bunch of ducks sitting around out there, do this. Do this recipe. Trust me. Hot, fast, high mountain seasonings and good, clean, hearty mallard breasts or duck breasts. You're, it's a winner. You're going to love it. Trust me. And everybody you serve it to is going to love it. And if they don't, well, they just don't like meat. And they can get on down the road. 
Anyway, thanks for joining us. Really appreciate you tuning into everything we do here at Wingmen. Again, drop down, mash that subscribe button, leave us a thumbs up. Give us a comment, let us know what your thoughts are on this recipe and what other ideas you have on ways to use high mountain seasonings. And until next time, we'll see you in the field.